uh, you know, is, is always very, very difficult to make predictions. We have several drugs that are in phase two. Um, there are some drugs that have been discontinued. We have a big problem in the case of HBV cure. Uh, we have uh, uh, drugs that works well. They do not solve the problem, but they are very, very safe. So we cannot accept risks with, with this, uh, this disease. Uh, it's very, very difficult to, 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 to make prediction of time. Uh, the, the way for regulatory is very, very long. I would say that uh, if I say that in three years or in two years, we may have one drug, uh, approved or near approval, I probably not so uh, mistaken, but uh, I will not bet my, my head on that. That's clear. Okay, so I, I think I have a, another, another question for Capucine. I think she's, she's on, can you unmute your microphone, please? Yes, yes. So uh, I, I would like to know, do you have any plans to include uh, research centers in Africa? Because as you can see, there are many drugs that are in the process of phase two trials and or even in preclinical pre trials. So what are your plans to include African centers in research? As you know, Africa has a high prevalence of hepatitis B and very few clinical trials include Africa for hepatitis B whether for adults or for children or for any other population. So I, I think maybe ICE's role may be to network a little bit more and bring in on board some of those research centers in Africa to include within clinical trials. Do, do you have any plans? Uh, Thank you, Manel. Yeah, go ahead, Massimo. Um, if you ask me if I have plans, I am not a pharma industry, I'm not a, an entity that starts trials. So uh, I cannot have plans. I, I completely agree with you. Uh, we, must, uh, we must continue to pressure to, to enlarge the basis for, 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 um, for having more and more centers uh, coming in in the, in the clinical trials. Uh, you know very well, it's very clear that uh, um, in the first phases of the development of drug, the, 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 the pharma companies are very, very keen to have fast recruitment and relatively little number of, of centers. Um, one of the most active centers in, is in New Zealand because they are very, very organized to, to run yeah. very, very fast uh, with all the required uh, ethical committees and so on and so on, but very fast, uh, this kind of trials. Uh, as a French or as an ex-Italian, now French, I, I get, uh, let's say, sometimes uh, I get nervous because they are much faster and, and we are not uh, included. So I think that... Uh, we have to think of it, uh, we have to pressure, and this is the role for ICE. But we will not be able probably to change this uh, at least for the, for the very early phases because this is very complicated, uh, as, you, as you know. Uh, yeah, what, I, I, yeah. what, what uh, let me just say one last thing. Uh, what I think we can do uh, as ICE and as a uh, um, clinician working in Africa, is to push not only uh, the industry, but also entities like NRS that has a long tradition to come also with trials in the south of the world, and in particular in, 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 in Africa for oh, HIV, sure. we can use that kind of, uh, of structure because as the structure to, to sponsor studies, uh, so we can, we can use that uh, at a certain point to, to push for, for what you are looking for, for the pediatrics for, for, for Africa, and I completely agree. But it's, it's a complicated process and, and we will not solve today. I mean, we, we can say whatever, yeah. if I say we will do it, I, I will just be sending a, a hair. But uh, I think we have to push for it all together. And I yeah. has a role on that. And there's a willingness as well. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think. I agree. I, yeah. I agree with you, Massimo. I think ICHBV can, um, influence uh, industry and also research agencies to be doing that. So that's something we can take on um, as, a, as an advocacy. And um, I think there's also another, a few other questions I was looking in the same topic on how can African get involved in cure trials? Um, I think we already answered that, but maybe there's something we can add. 
Um, yeah, no, not really on that, but uh, I was looking at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm stealing the job of Manal. I was looking at the same time to, to, the, to, the, um, to the questions that are coming. And, uh, um, and there are two questions that I think we, we, we probably should try to, to, um, to, uh, to answer. One question is, uh, are there any report of functional cure by HBV, uh, of HBV by loss of uh, S antigen in patients on nucleotide analogs? Uh, yes, obviously, if you treat very, very long time, you may have some loss of HBS in specific subcategory of patients. We do not know all the determinants. If you already start with a very, very low uh, quantitative HBS, you have more chance to, to, to go for it. But the chance is very, very little. It's uh, years, years and years, and is less than 0.5% uh, per, per year. Uh, and, and doesn't start before three, four years in most of the patients. So there is really a need for something better than the nukes all alone. Uh, in the, the, the second point is what would be the advantage of a complete HBV cure versus virus suppression? Uh, there are two advantages, the easy one to say. Uh, one, it will be a finite cure. So you have not to take the pill for, for forever. Uh, Few patients will be able to have functional cure just by stopping nuke after three, four years, but they are a minority. And uh, nuke alone is not efficient. Uh, the advantage is that you, you will be able to stop. And in some, in some uh, context, the people, people uh, in the US, like a, I think, imagine also in Africa, uh, where it's difficult to get the virus suppression, uh, uh, the, the tenofovirus, uh, to say that you have to buy it for three years, with, that, with something else, or for one year with something else, or for six months with something else, it's much easier to sell than to say you have to take this pill forever, and uh, eventually you are far from hospital, so you have no controls. It's, it's not easy. Uh, the second point is that for five years, you still have a big risk of cancer. Five to seven years of nuke. So this is the other point. If we get more functional cure, we lower it exponentially the risk, uh, uh, the risk of liver cancer. This is a major, a major point. And I would add to that, that also, um, it uh, may well be possible, I would also limit stigma, that a cure instead of treatment yeah. would really benefit the stigma and self stigma that people living with hepatitis B um, can have. Yeah, I was, I was being a little bit too much doctor and I was saying in some context, but obviously uh, not only, not only in, in, in Africa, but let's, let's think of the Asiatic communities. They have the same big problem with, with, uh, with stigma for, for, for yeah. the HIV. And, and so I, 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 it's, a, it's a problem that is larger than Africa. We are, today we are in Africa with our art, even if I'm, uh, I'm in Europe now, but, uh, uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a big problem, yes. Well, actually, the stigma is even much higher in children than in adults. Uh, they can't go to schools, they can't play sports, people avoid them completely. Uh, and the problem with children is that you cannot treat them unless they have elevated transaminases. They are the so-called immune tolerant. They do not fit exactly into the easels classification. Uh, they did not consider children when they classified, they've done this new classification easel, and I want your opinion about this. Uh, because most yeah. of those children do not fit in this classification. And I'm seeing tens and tens of children with very, very high viral loads, extremely high viral loads and normal transaminases, and their parents are scared that they might infect others, and they don't know what to do. And yeah. we have no solutions for them. Um, actually, we discussed that in a similar panel at the end of a session at the easel, uh, the virtual yeah. easel. Yeah. And I was stimulated to, to talk about that by Patrick Kennedy. And I completely agree with you. The paradigm of who should be treated in the different phases of the disease as uh, uh, defined by easel. Actually, the immunotolerant are now the chronic infection positive, but it's the same. Yeah. The groups yeah. are uh, ju just change the name to be a little bit more precise and less... Uh, uh, evocative of things that are not completely true because there is no real immunotolerance in the so-called immunotolerance. But finally, um, for hepatitis B, there is not only the clock of fibrosis, there is also the clock of the virus. We should start to treat before. The problem is that we say that we don't treat before the transaminases because we know that the, the usual treatments, the one that we have, in particular interferon in the old days, they didn't work. So 
we didn't treat because they didn't work and then we still not treat because we have nothing really working. If we have a functional cure with a, a different combination of drugs, immunotolerant will become yes. a, a target. I don't know whether the children will be the first target because obviously, as you know, there are more regulatory problems around, around, uh, around children than every trials for children. Sometimes, uh, is also ostracized by the by the um, by the company. They they first want to have the the, the proof of uh, of efficacy uh, and of advantage, uh, clinical advantage in uh, in, in, uh, in adults. But uh, I completely agree with you. If we, if we go for better drugs, uh, the time for children will come before, and uh, it will not. I hope very very much will not be only the immuno uh, the immunoactive. I mean, I, I'm sure that yeah. we we will be able to target the the, 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 the young people without uh, uh, so much disease and without uh, uh, inflammation. And that is good because as early as early you eat, eat, better results we will get. This is Antonio Bertoletti that always teaches us from his immunological perspective. Yeah. So, so there is a question here about any update on treatment of uh, hepatitis B in early pregnancy? Uh, we we are we are good with what we have, I would say, and uh, and um, I mean everything goes well uh, following the, the 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 rules we have now. Uh, so uh, treat earlier in pregnancy uh, can be done. Uh, is not the guidelines. I don't see the I don't see it. Uh, is a problem of access to the different uh, treatments. Is a problem of of having having uh, reaching out to all the people that need it. Uh, but if you are in a system that works, I know that in Africa is, is much more, uh, there was a session uh, yesterday discussing a lot about that, uh, it's much more complicated. But if we follow what, what is commonly said, uh, the, 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 the risk for the baby to get, to get uh, uh, the infection is very, very low. Uh, you need to vaccinate in, uh, in 24 hours. You need to lower the, the viral load in the mother in the last trimester, but also earlier. Always remember that if there are the criteria to treat, because there are the criteria to treat the hepatitis, the mother, you start the therapy before, even if you discover the disease yeah. just because of the pregnancy, because this is what happens. You did, and after you have to apply your knowledge as an hepatologist and decide, I treat because I want to prevent transmission or I treat because I need to treat the, the mother. And you can modulate the, the, the way to go for it. Uh, and we have a, a drug that is very good because then off of here, there are more and more data saying that it's safe. So we, we, have, the, we have what we need. Uh, we have to be put into the situation that we can do it. We need access to the drug. We need uh, cheap access to the drug. We need access to the, to the vaccine. Uh, we need access to the immunoglobulin when it is uh, relevant. Now, immunoglobulin is not uh, going to be available. Uh, I know that this is why. Very, this very is why. This is, it's not available. It's, this is uh, why. This is why I, I put as a the last point because I clearly the understand. The last point, that, yeah. yeah. I clearly understand. This is, but, this is but also without challenge. immunoglobulin, if the vaccination is done quite uh, quite uh, timely, the, and uh, the results are very good, then the, if you do the prophylaxis at the same time, what you gain with the, with the, with the immunoglobulin is not so much. So I think that. We are not bad for the pregnancy if if we do what we need to do. So I think there, Professor there was a full joint. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Manal. That, that's that's great. She, where where? Fatou, vous nous entendez? Yeah, I'm not sure she'll be able to participate. So maybe go ahead. Sorry. On parle français là, Capuzzi? No, no, no. We we have to stick to the. <laughs> So, so uh, uh, earlier there was a question about TAF. So, and there were questions about the, uh, is it uh, better for patients uh, in Africa to roll out TAF instead of the tenofovir with less side effects possibly. Uh, maybe we had a comment from Felipe Isabruk from WHO who said, uh, but there are some data that it increases the weight in adults. Uh, so what do you think about TAF? So uh, I live now and I work in a country that is considered a rich country, France, in which the authorities 
uh, didn't approve TAF because they're not, there is not enough advantage, new advantages compared to Tenofovir. So I'm biased. I think that there are situations in which we would need TAF and it would be very, very good to have TAF. Um, whether TAF is the solution in Africa, uh, it, it will depend uh, mainly on availability and price. I think that there is a slight advantage in terms of uh, side effects. And I would say that uh, in some populations, we, uh, we, we experience um, a more difficult uh, management uh, with tenofovir uh, because the people start with, uh, um, let's say, not a renal insufficiency, but uh, values that are uh, uh, less good and they may just slowly go to the to, to, to level of... Uh, of uh, danger or I mean of the tension uh, and uh, in, my, in my clinical practice I have a lot of patients from sub-Saharan Africa in which uh, with, with, with tenofovir I, 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 I have a little bit more a problem with, with, with the kidney function than, than I was used to have uh, um, uh, when, when my, my, my patients were, were less variate let's say, in, in, in Rome, when I was working in Italy. Um, so I think that there is a, there is a, there is a, there is a value for TAF, uh, but is all in the, in the hands of, uh, of who produce it, uh, who will produce it, who will sell it, who will buy it. So it's a question of price. Uh, I don't think that today we can say we have to go for TAF today. It would be already very, very good if we had 10 off of it for every patient needing it at a sustainable price uh, given by the governments, given by uh, the global fund or whatever. But now I, I'm stepping out from my scientific uh, role today. Okay. Uh, so Capuzzi, can, can, can you explain to us the role of ICE maybe in, in, in Africa and trying to improve advocacy uh, towards treatment of HBV infected patients? Sure. So we do we do a few things, and um, we have uh, currently one uh, African representative on our governing board, and uh, soon hopefully two. Um, one thing that we have done recently, for instance, was to work uh, with many partners around the world to have a session at the Global Fund Replenishment Conference. And Massimo was speaking there in Lyon uh, earlier last year, and this session really aimed to advocate for the integration of hepatitis B, uh, hepatitis C, to actually in uh, the Global Fund portfolio to really better integrate what they're doing for HIV, tuberculosis and malaria with the hepatitis response and to open their programs to further hepatitis work. That's one of the things we're doing and we work with research agencies, with uh, doctors, with researchers, with communities, with pharma and with all the stakeholders that really um, can push that agenda forward. That's one of the things we, we do. Um, Massimo, I see you want to say something. Yeah, we also, uh, this is not, uh, it is not really mature yet, but we also have uh, a, a working group around the, the issues of point of care. And I think that uh, very innovative point of care strategies will be uh, very, very important to, to reach out better and uh, keep the price low. When we, when we think of uh, many, many situations in Africa. Uh, We're actually thinking of reviewing from a resource limited setting all the HPV management practices. So we're starting that international working groups, which will have representative from Africa, uh, from Asia Pacific and other continents. And we'll look into what are the recommendations currently, uh, WHO wants, and try to improve them. Just to, just to say something a little bit fancy, uh, um, Obviously, COVID is, is a kind of damnation for everybody. Uh, and uh, some continents already paid the price, others are still paying the, 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 the big price for, for, uh, for, the, for the pandemic. Uh, but there was a, a huge amount of uh, brain and money put into the research for COVID. And I just learned that there are some, some uh, technologies that are being developed uh, for, for, for COVID, but can be adapted for, for other viruses. And in particular, I was talking with people uh, about that for, for hepatitis B. Uh, that might be really, really interesting. And uh, it's surprising that what the people, the, the mind of people can, can invent. So something that uh, looks like a, a CD player and uh, does the test. And uh, <laughs> is, 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 
is nice and uh, okay. would be very, very would be very very cheap and very very easy to to implement obviously it can work and not work it can be uh, trustful can be uh, good for all the situation i don't know but uh, there is there is movement there, is, there are things and ice is 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 is, uh, is doing something there we are active and uh, we will continue to be Thank you very much. Uh, that was an excellent session. Thanks to ICE and uh, we look forward to continuing our collaboration with Calder. So uh, thanks for this great session.